recently, hallelujah, to set the stage for me, hallelujah, and I want to say thank you. Because when I was sitting there, I just began to think like, you know what, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, as I follow behind her, it's like she's paving a way to make it easy, but hallelujah, but God, you strengthened her, you made her strong, because there's many of us that's following behind her, but you know what, hallelujah, she has to be strong, because sometimes the attack that comes towards you is not because of you or your family, it's because of us, and God, and then hallelujah, she's blocking, she's like our chief intercessor, hallelujah, blocking enemy, hallelujah, that we may walk into our destiny, and sometimes she gotta be able to take a hit, so God God had to build somebody strong for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that God knew my fears. He knew my insecurities. But he had to make a way maker for me. Hallelujah. That will walk before. Hallelujah. Make my path easy. Hallelujah. In ministry. For whatever God has called me to do. Amen. Hallelujah. So I honor my chief apostle on today. Hallelujah. I thank God for her. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for my spiritual father being in the house today. Hallelujah. Elder Stuart Edmonds. Hallelujah. I don't know if he's still here or if he had to step out, but I thank God for him even showing up. Amen. Hallelujah. And I always forget my mother, but hallelujah. I thank God for that woman of God back there. Hallelujah. Who instilled in me and imparted in me. Hallelujah. Before anybody ever gave me a title, anybody ever spoke to me. Hallelujah. Hey, God. And I thank Apostle Franklin, hallelujah, and her husband on today. Amen, hallelujah, because that's where the foundation of prayer was built. Hallelujah, in her living room. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know what a prayer book was or anything. I thought they was crazy. I, but, but they challenged me to go to a place in the spirit and prayer. So I thank God for her and her ministry being on here on today. Hallelujah, there the man of God is. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, God, Hallelujah. I got to go back to him only because, amen, he found me in a place where I didn't even, I came back. I had to be about 19 years old or something like that. And I, I didn't want anything to really do with ministry. I didn't really want to be in the church or anything. I was making the decision whether I'm going to stay in ministry or just go do my own thing. And I don't know, I don't even know how we hooked up. But he saw the evangelist in me before anybody else was. And this was the first person I sat under who taught me the word. His children even also provoked me to a place of prayer. Hallelujah. Wanting to go higher. So I thank God for the man of God that drilled the word in me and made me study to show myself approved. Amen. So I thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank all of you all. Hallelujah. Who had an ear to be in a place. Hallelujah. Amen. For being here. So let's go to the word. I'm going to start at Matthew. I'm going to go four places. You don't have to stand because I'm about to go a couple of places, and I won't be that long before you. But I'm going to go to Matthew 21. Man, it got hot in here. Either I was moving too much or something. Hallelujah. Matthew um, 21, verses 18 to 22. And it says, Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall unto the if you shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark eleven. And I'm coming out of the King James Version. <clears throat> and Mark 11, I'm going to read verses 12 and 14, and also 20, verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> and it says, And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the fig was not yet. 
And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Amen. Go with me to Luke 13, verses 6 and 9. I'm moving too fast. Forgive me. It's just trying to be for the sake of time. But Luke 13, 6 and 9, it says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth? It the ground and he answering said unto him Lord let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it up and it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shalt cut it down and lastly John 15 don't worry we gonna go somewhere amen if you stay with me hallelujah I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. And it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I decrease that you may increase, Lord God. And your word says the flesh profit of nothing, but the words that you speak are life and spirit. So I ask right now, hallelujah, that your spirit just take control in me and speak through me and let life flow out of this room, Lord God. I thank you that your presence flow out of this room, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your word will meet them at their appointed need, Lord God. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your word will bear much fruit in this room on today. Lord God, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. I thank you for setting the atmosphere, hallelujah, for a word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So I, I thank God that worship was, I'm not saying worship ain't never like that, but hallelujah. I thank God for the, for the anesthesia. Hallelujah. Because if you ain't get it in worship, you should have got it when she spoke. Hallelujah. And begin to say, ye shall receive power. Hallelujah. Because hallelujah. Because I said, God, how can I stand before the people? And this is just to encourage you because some are not here I'm not going to say it was meant for them, but I would just say this to encourage you on today. When she says, speak a thing. We talked in Sunday school this morning about declaring things over our children, over our family, speaking to the atmosphere. Sean Quan came up and began to say God was shattering some things. And then pastor came up to say, look, God is ready to receive. He's ready to endow us with power. Hallelujah. And I'm going to share. I'm just, I wasn't going to share this, but I might as well say it. The reason why I I decided to talk about this particular passage is a familiar passage, but I don't believe nobody really touch on too much about the fig tree. We hear talking about faith and things like that, but as I dug a little deeper and as I studied a little bit, I found out it was just more than about the cursing of the fig tree and why he did what he did. And so during anniversary time and while we was on a fast, I began to pray about our ministry, about other ministries and about the parent ministries and the leaders. And God began to speak to me in that classroom. I said, begin to write. So I started writing and I got ready to send out an email. 
But right when I was getting ready to send out the email, what God had told me to say, something, it's like I saw a vision. It was like I was like what Prophet Jordan say, sometimes you have to step out of time. It was like I stepped out of time. I was present, but I stepped into a situation. And in this, it was about the email I sent. And it was, and thank God it ain't nobody in this room whose faces I saw. But it was certain people in ministry, whether connected to us and outside of the ministry, whose faces I saw. And they was coming to the pastor about me. And some of the things they were saying is, you have no control over your young evangelist. You have no control over this. She just out here. She just saying things like this. She just doing this. Who gives her the right to say this? And I was... And when I came back, I was in this office and literally just saw everybody. And I was like, man, I was in amazement. And I, when I came back, I said, well, God, you gave it to me. I said, why would you have me get ready to send this? And you gave it to me and this come. And I only did what you said. And right when I said that, he brought me right back into the office. And this particular one pastor got up and he told me, oh, God, hallelujah. He said, how can you call what God is blessed, cursed? And, and he said, how can you tell us that we need to wither and die? And I said, and then I came back and I said, well, God, didn't you say to the fig tree when it wasn't bearing no fruit, die, cut it off, be withered and die. And I went back into the office and I told him that. And it was like, oh, hell, just broke loose in the office. And then I came back and I said, well, God, what is this? And then God said, and then God, I said, God, I, at first I'm like, well, Lord, you got to back something up. You got to teach me something in this because now I got all these people mad at me because I came to them. And if they was in a fruitful place, then it wouldn't affect them. But because they wasn't in a place of being fruitful and because I sent the email out to say wither and die, they got mad. And this is how some of our parent ministries is that's how i'm not talking about just us but it's just ministries in general they were just mad because they was unproductive and god began to take me and when i came back i said well god what is it about this tree so i was like mark it wasn't i know it wasn't the time of the fig the bible and mark is saying it wasn't the time for figs but the word also said but then it came up to me and it said uh what is it second timothy i think let me switch it because I had to work. Well, this is Second Timothy where he said, be, in, be instant in season and out of season to rebuke, to reprove, and to exhort with long suffering. Four, thank you. Second Timothy 4, what is it, 2? Something in there. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And as I, and I begin to think about it, and I want to just say what the fig tree symbolizes. Uh, the fig tree was a symbol of Israel. Just like the maple leaf symbolizes Canada and the thistle also Scotland and the leek of Wales, so the figure represented Israel and, uh, and also the people of God. And one of the seven essential fruits of the promised land, which it made flow with milk and honey, that was the sign of a fig. It represented salvation and most mentioned, it was most mentioned in the Bible. And having them is a metaphor of being blessed. And lacking them is a metaphor of being cursed, according to Songs of Solomon 12 and 13 and Jeremiah 8 and 13. They also bear a sign of abundance and God's blessing and good things to come. So with that, it's some people that, you know what, it looks like they're fruitful. It was like when Jesus came, he, it said he hungered. And when he came, it, he saw a fig tree that was full of leaves. And as I did some study, I had to go back and find out the culture. I had to find out what it means about a fig tree. And what I found out the beginning of March, let me just back up and say, I, I thought it was strange that God would give me this message because sometimes you will hear this message during the Passover week, during Holy Week. I know some of us, we may not participate in Lent right now. Lent just started this past Wednesday. And we just got off a 40-day fast, and some may be like, I'm not doing another 40 days. I'm not doing this. I'm not pressing through. But for some of you who are, it's like God is doing something. He's cutting away. He's evaluating. During this time, he's coming by to evaluate. Are we still in the same place? So when he saw that, when he saw the fig tree was full of leaves, it had an appearance of being fruitful. And it said, and when I found out at a, at, during this time, the fig is supposed to have something called tequash. And Tequash was a small little knob on the tree. It was the forerunner before the fig. And people that was peasants and passers by, they would come by and eat it. It was, it was a sign that say, you know what? This tree bears much fruit and will be about to produce more fruit in about six weeks. That's when we see the fig. 
So when he got to the tree, it wasn't just because he cursed it to show the example of faith. When he looked at the tree, he was he was the first fruit inspector. Even though we try to model ourselves after Christ and we ought to inspect people's fruit, but he was the first fruit inspector. So when he got there and didn't see no to quash, he said it, it meant that this tree was worthless. It was useless. It was taking up space. And he cursed it because it gave an appearance to be able to satisfy, to be able to equip with the feet of need. And God, and this is what, and I'm going back even to the vision. Some of them was mad. And it ain't just those that was connected to us. It was outside. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even that big in the city. Why are you even sweating me? Hey, God. Hallelujah. I, but, but, but what happened is because a lot of people don't know who I am. So I'll be in the midst of certain pastors and certain leaders. And, yeah, they look nice on TV. Yeah, they look nice like this. And we, we see the leagues. We see their ministry. And it looks fruitful. And we like, man, I want to go over there. Man, I want to be like them. But then when I start getting around certain individuals, I, when I got to the tree, I was in hunger. I was in need. But when I got there, there wasn't nothing there to satisfy. There wasn't something of a forerunner so when i got there i said well when i it's it's this particular i'm just gonna go there it's this particular minister and everybody just it, it irks me now every time i hear him i said god what is but it, it's a righteous indignation and and, um, and my thing is you keep bringing him in because he draws money but you know he's sleeping around with the women in your church. You know he's sleeping around with the people in the city. But you keep bringing them in. And what makes me mad is that people jump and shout over his word. But it needs to be a time that we go up there and say, you be cursed and you wither and die because you bear no fruit. Hey, God. And I told, you know, it was funny. When I minister to this one person, I don't care if she see it, hear it, or see it, because I ain't revealed who it is. But during the time I was in a weak state around my birthday, around July 15th, and I couldn't make it to wherever we was going. We was going out of town, and the Lord told me to go to the lake. And when I went to the lake, I start. I'm going to, I didn't even understand. I'm like, God, I should be a trip. Why am I at the lake? You know, I kind of felt bad. I'm like, well, I couldn't make it. And my birthday was dag on it. I'm going to go to the lake. But when I got there, it was a certain person I haven't seen in a while. We met each other. As I was coming down to the water, she was coming up. And she began to speak to me. And I said, man, that's the soul of God that I will bump into you because I didn't like the way things left off when, when we was um, hanging out. Not even hanging out, you know. It was like a witnessing thing. But she got mad thinking I was trying to look down on her. We in class. The teacher, she thought the teacher was favoring me over her. It was something so silly. I said, the world, this girl is crazy. And I, and I met her and I ran into her. And um, she began to talk to me and she was saying that she just started saying, I don't know if I should go with this particular person. You know, she was just talking. But in my, as she was talking, this minister name kept coming in my spirit. So I said, I said, then she said, well, who do you think it is? And I told her, I said, uh, I said, I already know who it was because you was there and they just had a revival during this season. So I said, so when she said his name, I said, it's such and such. And she began to break down and cry. And I told her, honey, don't be another pretty face. And I know because of who she is. And I said, and she trying to be healed. She was trying to be delivered. And then she began to tell me how these pastors rebuked her because they caught her where she was at. And I thought to myself, I said, well, how can he rebuke you? He should have dealt with him because he brought him in. And when I began to speak to her, and the thing is, then she started straying away as I began to speak and say some things to her. She started, to, well, how would you know? How did you know? And I said, well, you know what? You ain't the only one I done bumped into with the same story. Attending a revival. This is going on. The spirit is high. And he see you and he called. He want to just minister to you. He see something in you. I said, you about the third one. I said, all three of you cannot have the same story. I said, the second one was just was strong enough that she got up out of there. She broke the thing. I said, this is a shame. And it's, it's ministries that we see, and they produce no fruit. And the thing of it is, and they will use something that's to say, don't judge me. Keeping people in a place of staying in an unperfected place, an unfruitful place. I understand I don't judge. You know, we don't judge or anything like that. But when you got the collar on 
and you talking about you represent something. Now you're giving a false illusion. You're giving a false appearance. I don't see no to quash. I don't see a forerunner. I don't see anything. The people that's under you, your sons, which you call your sons and daughters, they, they, they don't have any fruit. Can I use these two for example real quick? Hallelujah. I know, but since you're up there, you stay in the hallelujah. Because, amen, because I just see so much growth. From when we met, I believe when I first got here, it was a conference Elder Parks and them had, cleaning out the room. And, and from there, I, I would say, hallelujah. I can see they are really connected to the branch. And what we see, we see in the forerunner. We, we haven't got the full fruit until they get to Georgia. But we see in a taquash on them. We see in something that bears fruit. They are forerunner. When she get up here and preach, hallelujah, you see your pastor. You be like, go ahead, Lawana, go ahead. <laughs> hallelujah. He shift the atmosphere with his praise. Hallelujah. When I look at our praise team, there's some places that I go to, and it's like, man, you can't set an atmosphere. But they able to. I ain't saying like that, but I'm saying because of who she is. Maybe that's why she had to join the praise team, for some fruit can get out. I'm not saying that y'all wasn't producing it. I'm just saying for y'all can get a little bit more greater to show an example. So that when they see you, wherever you singing at, they be like, man, they belong to Pastor Pearl. They belong over there to greater works. Because they didn't came in here and shifted the atmosphere. Sometimes she'll get on the mic, the place to be so dead, and she'll just get up and say hallelujah. And the whole atmosphere just shifts. Because that's because she got some to quash. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you come, you get satisfied. You get what you need because she's connected to the true branch. And it talks about how a fig tree, how it may be short, but it extends out. And it's bearing much fruit. And it's strong because the branch is intertwined. And that's how we about to be up in this place. Hallelujah. As she's sending people to Georgia. As she's setting up people in California. As she's setting up people in Florida. Hallelujah. As she's setting up them in University Heights. Those that left. Ministries that have left and say they are part. But I'm not saying her just many. I'm just going to use for example. It is what it is. How you just stagnated? I said at your church when we had to, when you first started, and they, for some reason, they gave me a mic just like today. And I told them, I said, my leader don't produce bad fruit. So if I go to your place, it ain't, it ain't I'm trying to down your ministry. I'm checking for the fruit. Because you couldn't stay under this this long and not be changed. When I look at you, I'm looking for fruit because your life speaks volumes. She said earlier today, it makes no sense for you to say something and you live a different way. So when I look at you and you living outside of the fruit, I, I got to say, are you really connected? Because that's certain, I don't care if she have an anger problem and God delivered her. But if you under it, just like he delivered her, I'm not saying got an anger problem. Just use an example. Hallelujah. At some time, you know, at some point. You shouldn't be as mean as the day I met you when I first got here. You shouldn't be cussing. I'm not speaking to nobody. Please don't take it the wrong way. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hallelujah. Your mom. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. You shouldn't be talking to say even. Let me, let me just use myself. Hallelujah. At some point, I got to step out of a place. At some point, because she moves in power. Because she steps out even when she don't want to. At some point, Monique got to get up and got to do. God dealt with me. It's been many times I try to give her back what God told her to give. The first time it's because I was just angry. I'm just going to say it. I was mad. I didn't like mother. Can I say it? She had teed me. I say teed me off. So I didn't like her. She started to irritate me. Well, I love you now. Hallelujah. Because God dealt with me because at some point, growth had to come. And I would say that my mother said, are you going to teach on this? And I was like, no, I forgot all about who you called to, but I just tied in right now. I said that God called me. So if I would have left out of anger because of a chastisement, 
then who was a lie? It certainly wasn't God. Because if I said God caught me to this place, caught me to this woman of God, then it don't matter how much, whatever they say to hurt me. Not to say they did it intentionally or not. God dealt with my response. Can I just use me for an example? She was right. I was, she was right. I was young. I didn't know. I'm about 19. What, who, are you, who are you talking to? I was upset. But the thing of it is, it was right. God checked me and said, even when I told you how to stand because he showed me it was about to happen. He said, you were still immature because you didn't do what I told you to do. I told you to dance. I cannot just tell you, I ain't trying to say I'm up like that. But God had already showed me. I still remember today, but God had showed me. And he said, when it come, I need you to dance. When the rebuke came, I didn't dance. I flared up. I got mad. And God said, see, you didn't listen. You didn't have to bear the mark. You lost focus. I told you to come to learn how to be a daughter, how to be a son, that, that the power that you may walk in the inheritance, and you lost it. But then I will be out of the will of God if I stumbled off. Family cuss us out all the time. We fight with our sisters and brothers, and we don't leave. We still love them. So why would I get mad if they come and they chastise me if I say this is my family? If I know I'm really called, if I know this is where I need to be, then I don't care what they say. I, I'm, I'm determined, even if they put me out, I'm still going to come back in because I understand this is my place of blessing. Many don't want to say that. I refuse to leave when I'm at a point of breakthrough. God is trying to get us to have some to quash about us, see some fruit. Hallelujah. So that when he branches out in our ministries, hallelujah, we can be strong, we can be fruitful, and we can bear after our own kind. The word says that, you know what, when we look at the word, it's like a reflection. So if I'm in her, hallelujah, no matter where I go, how do I should be able to reflect her well. That's why I had to fix it up. Oh, God. I couldn't come. Let me tell you about the fruit. It makes no sense for me to get up here and talk about the fruit and being connected. And if I came up here with my hair brushed back or whatever else, I said, God, God definitely said, you can't go up there like that. I'm going to tell on myself, is that okay? So that's why the makeup was on. I did have the heels on at first, but I said I need to turn off. That's why I had the jewelry on. Because she fly. I'm sorry, I mean like that, but she is. She look good when she preach. So God was like, you got to come up there looking sweet, but come with a hard word. Because you know what? You got you to gotta reflect who you say you should be a forerunner from. So back to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to use them today. Hallelujah. So if, if they are for, I'm going to go back. Because some of us, no matter if he called me the Apostle Franklin Church, Danny Church, whoever. Wherever I go, it got to be some fruit. If I didn't see no taquash, I wouldn't go to Georgia. I don't mean like that. You got some taquash. You got some fruit. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying, if it was no fruit, if I just saw leaves, no change, just honoring, just acting ignorant, not seeing them being productive, I'm like, going to Georgia. But if I, for what? But hallelujah, when she spoke and said, God has made me wealthy. He got up and said, when he's, I received it. Come on, Chauncey. So I'm like, you know what? They keep prophesying wealth to me. So I better stay connected with the ministry because if the wealth going to flow over, if God give her her millions, it got to come this way too. Because if we really a daughter and son, I don't believe she'll just leave us out there like that. I, I got a sense of entitlement as a child. Because you going to come to mama and be like, that's why. Hey, God, y'all better say it. I don't care. Word came at the word during the anniversary talking about there's going to be a replacement and some new leaders. I was sitting there thinking, well, that'd be for them. It ain't going to be for me because ain't nobody getting my portion. I had to say, God, I had to say, God, I got to get it together. I got to get it together. Because I don't need her to cut me off. He said to cut her. Uh, I can't. mm mm-mm. I got, that's, oh, y'all don't hear it. I said, mm-hmm, 
Let me do what I got to do, Lord. Straighten me up. Let me do it without refusal. Hallelujah. But, Lord, how do I can't be cut off. I don't care how you change the guard. I follow whoever. But how did, I, didn't, I didn't work too hard. I didn't set up many. I didn't set under many rebukes, even when she didn't even know she was cutting me. Sending out text messages. I'm bleeding. And then she jokes about it and says she type C, she needs some blood. I refuse it. I refuse it. For even those that may even have to come back. Huh? You ain't getting my portion. Because some people get cut out. You know when, when it's the wealthy, when their children don't act right, they get cut off. And then the other children just say, well, that just means more for me. Oh, y'all, y'all don't want to go there. I feel bad. I feel bad. Sorry that you did it. But hallelujah. When, when Joseph walks into her place. Josephina, however you want to put it. When she walks in her place of wealth and when them brothers and them children try to come back. Oh, you ain't getting my portion. You know, like she taught on this one time when you leave your mother's house and have to come back, the rules is different. That You know, things have changed and some may try to come back thinking it's the same way and you're like, no, I ain't sharing my room. I didn't have a room by myself all this time. You want to come back with all your children. All your children and they children. I ain't saying like that, but that's, it may be some ministries like that. Uh Uh-uh. I ain't sharing my room. You better send them to the basement, the attic. I didn't have my space for too long. They can't share a room with me. I need mama's car. I'm not about to share it with you. Oh, come on here. Because oh. things ain't the same. I've been having run of the house since you've been gone. You know how it is, them older siblings. They come back thinking they running something. Where you been? I remember when I was growing up, it was just me and my brother. One month's time, my sister had to come back. It was her and all her children. They trying to run things. Hold on a minute. You have no rights over the TV. Why are you on my computer? Why are you and your friends? In my room. Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Not my room room, but my actual space. Oh, God. I, I don't even know. I done left the notes. Oh, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Give me back, Jesus. Give me back. I just refuse. They ain't going to take it. Hallelujah. I got to grow. Hallelujah. The word says, hallelujah. Let me go on because I didn't already said some things. I'm going to tell you why I had to be replaced. It says, an uh, orchard, a person that tends to trees, they said trees are not pets. If they don't produce, they have to be replaced. The figs wasn't bearing fruit and wasn't going to because there was no sign of a forerunner. A time had to come for a tree that would produce a season after season. And I would say, if you don't want to be replaced, step in your place. God wants us to bear fruit. Season after season, no matter what season, no matter if I'm in that heart shattering season, no matter where I am, if I feel like God, why God still wants me to bear much fruit. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay away from that because I didn't already talk. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says. It says Jesus wasn't putting up with the fig tree that didn't produce fruit. And he wasn't going to put up with a temple that wasn't producing either. That's why he had a righteous indignation. If you pay attention to both stories, it talks about even the clearing of the temple. It was more he was coming to do away with because something new had to come. And that's why God said, I want to undo you with power. But you got to, something's got to die. And we've been holding on to people, places, and things. And we know we should have told them, be, die, wither and die. And some may say, what can, how can God, you know, it was God's creation and he cursed it. Because it wasn't producing any fruit. God may have gave me a position, told her to put me in a position of a national evangelist and it be over the ministry. But if I don't produce any fruit, he can tell, look, wither and die, cut away. And I was trying to do it myself. I was like, Mm-mm, I ain't, it's got to be somebody else more qualified than me. 
she can give it to Elder Cynthia. That's all I will. I will say it like that. I was like, Elder Cynthia can do it. I, I did. I said it. I was like, God, she do evangelism work. She go out. Let her do it. Not me. I ain't called to this. I ain't really called like this. I don't know. But then when God dealt with me and I read, I read that, that's why that man came. Now I can stand back at him and say, look, because I'm starting to walk in my place and realize what God has called me to do. And just like you always say, stay in your lane. Then I become fruitful. I become fruitful and multiply because of who I'm connected to. The word says in Micah chapter 7, it says, Woe is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruit, as the grapes gleaning of the vintage. There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none of right among men. They all lie and wait for blood. During this time of the clearing of the temple, and when he cursed the fig tree, Jesus was going through a lot. He knew he had to get ready to go to the cross. The same people that threw down palm. You know, we had that palm Sunday, and we talked about how he rolled the triumph entry, how he rolled on the donkey, and they screamed, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then was the same people that was plotting to kill him. And here he had to come. Before people, he said, look, I guess he was like, you know, I ain't about to put up with this. Something new had to come. And that new thing is him. It is Christ. And that's what she's doing. She, look, she's going through some things. She's teaching, coming to a people, coming to places. And the people plotting because they don't like what they see. And not to say it like that, they don't understand it. They don't, they trying to kill the fruit. They trying to cut it off. But God like, no, nah, I got her. Amen. Well, you just said, you know, that when you got up here and said you was at a point of just saying, Lord, what is going on? Why me? You know, I had to think, and you know, and, and it reminded me again, you know, pray, cover our leader. Because it's those that will try to seek to cut off the blessing, the fig place in us, that place, the place of abundance in us. And then I just, I'm going to cut over. It says, right here it says, Jesus cursing a fig tree and turning over the tables in the temple could be compared to a farmer chopping down an unproductive tree. And it says, imagine if you were a farmer with a hungry family to feed. Replacing the tree or whatever crop would be out of necessity and compassion. Likewise, if people are to be saved, taught, healed, delivered, reproved, and so on, then the church or the people in the church have to be replaced with something new out of necessity and compassion. She got to cut away because if God is causing her, calling her to a place of a new thing and we're hindering her, then we must be cut off if we keep the ministry from being productive. If certain parent ministries are connected and they're in a place of not being fruitful, they have to be cut off because it's others, it's something new that needs to rise up. As something new, it's something new that needs to come into place. And I ain't talking about the ministry or anything like that. I'm just saying for, for, for those that be it, they see the tape, hear the tape or whatever, hallelujah, that they know no, so look, something new got to come. You're going to be replaced if you keep lacking. And if you keep, and not so much of, it ain't about the growth, how many members you got or anything like that. It's about expanding yourself, stretching yourself. She encourages us to stretch ourselves, to go up higher, to go deeper in prayer, to go deeper in our worship. It makes no sense for us to come in a house and we can't worship. Especially if you've been in this house and you under this leader. Something got to drop down in you. Hallelujah. I don't care how much it's people that say, you may think that you have a prophetic ear or however. But you should have enough prophetic ear to say whoever's teaching, if God got a word to be there. I, look, that's even for me too. I can't pick and choose who I want to hear because they got a word. Who I want to hear sing because I chose her. Well, I like to hear Saria sing over this person. Not to say it like that, but you, you know what I'm saying. I can't pick and choose. I got to have enough. I got, if I'm a prophet, then I got to have a prophetic ear enough to hear whoever God uses. That God is telling me to listen, stay here, here, so that you may be changed, that something may take place in you. Just to offer a little grace. Jesus don't treat people like trees. But what he does is he, he's concerned about us 
being, you know, producing fruit. We got to, we have to look a different way. I can't look the same as somebody on the street. I know I'm not different than the person on the street. But at some point, somebody should be able to look at me and see a difference. Amen. Amen. And, and too long, we like, we like this. We, we look in the same way. It, it's no fruit. We're giving a false perception of the church. And it's making the universal body as a whole look bad. From people to say they call, from people to say, I'm such and such. Touch my not, touch my, not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. But look, I ain't hearing that if you ain't living right. I'm sorry. I, 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 look, I ain't going to touch a person that's living up right. But if you causing people to stumble, I'm about to tell you whether and die. She just told us we had power, right? Yeah. Amen. And go out in the same. And, and just to get us, you know what? I was uh, doing a prophetic, doing a prayer line. Tamika was singing a song, God of a second chance. He's giving us chance after chance. He's giving us chance after chance. He's a God of once again. I mean, that thing stuck with me. And but I learned that before an uh, orchard or whoever tends trees, I don't even know if I'm pr- pronouncing it right, before they cut a tree down that's not fruitful, they said they, it goes through a series of tests. They try to look for, you know, if it's the roots, if something in the, is the fungus building up in the roots, what is causing this tree not to be productive or produce because they feel like they invested too much. It would be a waste of their investment to just let it go to waste. And some of us, you know what, that's why the reproof got to come. That's why the rebukes have to come. That's why the word has to come because it's like she's, when they told, when they told the woman of God, look, you got to let some folks go. But I believe she was like, God, Look, can we just can we just work with them? She was like that. She was like that gardener going pulling out fungus. But I understand why, because some people don't want to change. Some people don't want to be delivered. They comfortable in a mess, and that's why they have to be cut away. That's why I believe I read when I read in Luke when it said when the man asked, "Look, can we give it one more year? And if it don't produce any fruit, okay, then let's cut it away." And I believe this is what we come into at at a point in the ministry, not with just us, but a universal body that God is saying, look, I'm coming to check your fruit. I'm coming to check your fruit because God's about to tell some ministries, some, some of us, some people, whoever, if we don't get it together, wither and die, die off because you affected the growth of what could be you hindering a crop, you hindering a fruitful place. And in my closing, I'm, about, I'm done. I just want to c- encourage the people of God. Because I was, I was on the computer the other day and also to encourage the woman of God. Um, I was on YouTube at my, on my new job. They had me a lot dealing with numbers and reading charts and all this other stuff and finding out what numbers mean. And when I came to YouTube, I decided to go into this analytics or something they had, and it was a bunch of charts. And I went under demographics. And even though we may be a small ministry, God has us operating on an international level. And as I look, I don't have a passport. I would just want to encourage the people. If somebody try to talk down to you, say we ain't nothing or whatever, because we don't have such such and such or how many other members. It's somebody in Hong Kong watching us daily. I'm like, I don't even know. You know anybody in Hong Kong? Well, they watching us. People in Singapore. I don't know nobody in Singapore. I don't, look, people in Australia. I wrote it down. I had it right down. I said, the what? They watching us. The United States, we was the most, of course, the United States. But we got over 18 places that watches us faithfully. They may never step in this place. To them, they may think we, they may think we Creflo Dollar or something. The way we be on, the way they on here. But Ohio's one. Michigan, Florida, probably Bowie got some people down there tuning in. Illinois, I don't know who in Illinois. Connecticut, New York, I thought about Serena and her people. When she go down there and sing, hallelujah. We got people in North Carolina, the District of Columbia. I don't know nobody in Louisiana. I hear y'all just met somebody that came and preached last week. How maybe he's spreading the word, but this was already here before I found out about him. Well, amen. 
They down there watching. People in Washington, South Carolina, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arkansas, New Mexico, and Maryland. I just want to encourage you guys. So the next time the praise team is up here to the praise team, hallelujah, if you up here and you feel like the people ain't responding, sing anyway. Because somebody in Singapore is learning how to worship. Somebody in Singapore may be going through the same thing you are. Like I, I, These people ain't responding. But I see them worship and bring it an anointing. When you preach, they look, you can tell, look, I didn't cross borders with even having to, with even having to step past borders. I'm preaching in Australia and I'm in Cleveland. But look, I told myself I didn't get upgraded. I ain't the national evangelism evangelist. I'm the international now. I said, I said, I almost cheated myself. I almost gave it up. I said, the devil is a liar. You gonna die today, Monique? You gonna raise up? Hallelujah. The praise team, they are the greatest in Cleveland. Because I don't know no other praise team that's singing in Australia. They're singing in Singapore. Hey, you can let them know. We go many places. Why? Because she paved the way for us. Because she stepped across waters. Because, look, we got people in Jamaica, Africa. They look at us and they be like, that's a small church or this and this. And they judge us by our, our how many members we have. But we fruitful. She paving ways for people that's even coming across this pulpit, even in this house. People in Singapore been watching the refiner's fire. I remember recording that because God told me to record when Apostle Dobson was speaking during that anniversary, the um, refiner's fire. He opened, even though he opened the door for her and, and this, but we also opened the doors for him. We may not have the money for the word network, but hallelujah, we getting far with the resources that we using. Now I can say, hallelujah, we have reached coast to coast. You know how TV is, we coast to coast, shore to shore. I can say greater works reach coast to coast, shore to shore. They everywhere. And it's funny because he got, he got us, he got us strategically and people watching us in regions that surround the United States and different parts. We in the middle. But you got the District of Columbia over here, people down in Mexico over there, California over here. And it's like it's all in four, I would say the four corners. And I would say this, how we, look, they said to take care of our pearl. I bet you one of them, somebody probably was in Australia like, Lord, please send her here, hearing that word. Them coming by. If you don't do right, God going to take her up. Is a people waiting for her? And it probably is. But hallelujah, they can't take my promise, not yet. Okay? Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you, amen, and the people in a place today to know that you bear much fruit. If you stay connected, hallelujah, if you stay connected, you wouldn't have a problem about being cut away. You're going to grow strong. You're going to be in a fruitful place. When Apostle, when Apostle Franklin, even for you and your ministry, hallelujah, be in a fruitful place. Because you came today and you heard the word to check the fruit. Even in our house, check the fruit. Other ministries, check the fruit. Amen. Amen.